On 27th July 1985, Second Lieutenant Walter Ochora announced on Radio Uganda that the Uganda National Liberation Army had overthrown President Milton Obote. Chief of Defense Forces Lieutenant General Tito Kelo became president two days later, rising to full general. Brigadier Basilio Okello became CDF with the rank of Lieutenant General and Colonel Zedi Maruru was promoted Brigadier to become Chief of Staff. On 2nd August 1985, the new president met leaders of Uganda's political parties and despite losing a battle with the English language, he managed to explain why the army had hosted Obote. The language which Uganda that very much I know Uganda people there like to speak in English. <laughs> but Uganda is not English. English in Europe and in London. Gentlemen, the overturn of the uh, government of Porto. It has not come for any politician in Uganda. It's not again any politics. Not any politician want to overturn of the Obote government. Obote himself he organized it to fight him with each gap in each government. That is the truth. We got to try and try all his best to put some member of his parliament away. But also try to get the charm, the charm MP and charm minister near with him more than others. But it's president of the country and a bit of for the for the long term, long long term. Then what it will be in each office with the minister from the morning up to evening? <laughs> what did he talk about at that? <laughs> what time can they do? Or do it job? We got to get a tie. I see the part of his eye. <coughs> we got to get the wakachisi um, at each yeah. After taking off as president, General Tito Kelo invited Uganda's religious leaders to explain why the army he commanded had removed the elected government of Dr. Milton Obote and his Uganda People's Congress. So thank you very much for you to leave your office to come to meet me in this afternoon. I've been calling you uh, for this sort of meeting about uh, the military takeover which took place on 27 July last Saturday. The problem I would like to explain for you as the leader of the religion. I respect you for my art and I'm sure I know much of you. I will meet you in a different place. I thought you might be agree with me about uh, what I can say. The military 
On 2nd August 1985, General Okello launched an assault on the English language and despite losing it, Uganda's top clerics were able to understand why the old general had decided to give marching orders to Dr. Apollo Milton Obote. In 1983, President Apollo Milton Obote granted a rare interview to Kenyan journalist Abel Ndumbu in which he poured out his heart about the problems bedeviling his Uganda. This was at a time when many in Uganda and abroad were urging the Uganda People's Congress regime to talk peace with those rebels fighting it in the bush and those in exile. In response to these calls, President Apollo Milton Obote said, no way. He described those opposed to him as bandits. And prominent among these bandits was Noel Kabuta himself and his colleagues in the National Resistance Army. Get ready for what President Apollo Milton Obote told the Kenyan journalist Abel Dumbu in 1983. I, I don't understand. You know, you say they will not come. I'm not begging. I'm not begging people who are in exile to come home. I'm expressing a concern as a leader. They may not like me, and I know they don't like me, but I'm their leader. I'm running the government of their country. And I would be remiss in my responsibility not to tell them that you are free to come home. I don't want them tomorrow to start uh, in the reverse order to say, we were never asked to come home. But I reject, I reject totally what they normally say, that there should be, or what do you call it, uh, a round table conference between the government and all the dissident groups. I reject that proposition. Why? Once you have an election, on a multi-party basis and some people decide to go to the bush with guns and then later you say well let us talk and you you talk you may succeed in that talk and you form a new administration what are you going to do are you going to hold another election because if you hold another election somebody is bound to lose not everybody will be elected. And those who lose will have learned a lesson that the only way by which they would go into government would be to go to the bush. Then call for a conference. And since you have already agreed to a previous conference, you can't now logically say you don't like a second conference. So you'll go on and on, on and on. The elections become meaningless. I promise these people that they come, they will be safe, like any one of us. You can't stop uh, criminals attacking any one of us. Even as journalist Abel Ndumbu was circulating that interview, the bandits led by Yoel Museveni were disorganizing the Uganda National Liberation Army so badly that in the end, the UNLA was forced to overthrow the government of the Uganda People's Congress. In came the Army Commander General Tito Kelo as President of Uganda. And his first mission was to invite all those opposed to his government to talk peace, something which President Obote had rejected outright. Among those who responded to the calls was the Uganda Freedom Movement of the late Dr. Andrew Takome Kaira, 
and the Uganda National Rescue Front, led by General Moses Ali. On 3rd September 1985, the UNRF and the UFM held a joint press conference at the International Conference Center. When General Tito Kello took power, he named the Uganda Airlines General Manager Colonel Wilson Toko de facto Vice President and Defense Minister. With Lieutenant General Basilio Okello's Chief of Defense Forces, this trinity was the nucleus of the military council government, which invited all rebels who had been fighting the Obote regime to join it for peace. On 17, when we come to power, we must call our brothers, all who are in the booth, uh, to come back home. And our problem at home, let us solve by talk, not by gun. That's my M, my, my, my man, our, our uh, head of state, M, who has been announcing that all Ugandan to become out, let us be talk together in peaceful way. Problem we cannot solve by gun. We solve the problem by peace talk. That's why our brothers, since 1979, uh, some of them was 1970, uh, 1980, they was in the booth. Whenever they come in the, in, the, in, the, in the city, there was fear to go up and down. So today we are free with them because they are already willing to make, get peace in Uganda by talk. I think that's all why we have been uh, all gathering here in this room, maybe our, some of them from outside gathering here in Uganda. It was, however, a very shaky regime, and what, with Kampala's rumor mill, the military government found itself preoccupied with dispelling rumors as this September 1985 show on the government's Uganda television confirms. After the Okello generals took power, they called on Comrade Museveni, who was leading the guerrilla war against the government, to report to Kampala Central Police Station. Then they softened and invited him to join the government. Then they realized that the NRA was consolidating and getting ready for the final onslaught to capture power, so they agreed to peace talks to be chaired by Kenya's president, Daniel Arap Moy, in Nairobi. At the start of the peace talks, Museveni played hardball and started by rejecting the participation of people he called killers. That way, Brigadier Wilson Toko was dropped from the Okello delegation. In fact, Museveni refused to shake hands with any of Okello's officials except Paolo Kawanga Semogele, whom he reached across the white table to greet. He ignored the other officials like Sam Kutesa, who was Okello's attorney general. Museveni also pressurized Okello to drop Obote's vice president and defense minister Paolo Mwanga as his prime minister and replace him with Abraham Maligo. Museveni only attended the opening of the talks which lasted several months and kept coming in at crucial stages. Otherwise, he left the NRA delegation to be led by Musei Samson Chiseka. Other members of Museveni's team included the brainy Abu Mayanja and Hope Chivenjele. After four months of tough negotiations, the two belligerents, National Resistance Army and Military Council, signed a peace agreement, December 17, 1985. The agreement recognized Tito Okello as president and Yori Museveni as vice president, and each of the two belligerent sides would contribute half of the troops to form the new National Army for Uganda. Meanwhile, the NRA continued to get ready for power. What Information Minister Dr. Michael Jok Morozi did not tell the world was that the Nairobi peace talks had actually become jokes. Barely six months later, the National Resistance Army stormed Kampala and took power, restoring peace and sanity after five years of utter turmoil. Awo munu nuzilari uka sumuru lao, nari uka sumuru lao imundu. Kwa ta chita au kwa ta nyoko. Nari uka imbra pereketia, mpaku mshua pereketia. Bwaa! Bukatidia, bukatidia, chitia guzo. 
Ate ate za banya ya zoza za banya ya za banya ya mbya soka ngani ga mati tito tito Mhm ene ikolo guno kune ne kuda mukanti rutwa awo ne baloka basumulu la izile ne baloka basumulu la izawe baziliyo baziliyo toko toko nga muri mu ne po nchito gumu chito gumu lira lila pakwachi toko toko kudimwa o kale no feje twali twali mudembe jerere twali mudembe but the Nairobi peace agreement contained a key clause that called on both sides to immediately cease any human rights violations, a condition the Okelo simply could not guarantee as its marauding soldiers continued to murder people and commit atrocities. The NRA would later use this failure to move in and take power, accusing the Okelos of having violated the agreement. And so far, after intense fighting, the NRA swept into Kampala January 25, 1986 to usher in a new era.